We are back again for another edition of Rudy's Rants from Come On Now, the podcast. This is your host, Rudy Rodriguez Showmott, and I have another one to bring you right now. But Before we jump into it, thank you for your support. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell. We are now over 2,000. We broke it last night. We thank you so much. We're at 2,000. 16 subscribers and climbing in our six-month-old podcast. Help us get to 2,200 today. Today, let's make it happen. 2,200 today. Now, let's go. This is not so much a rant as this. This is an I told you so. Caitlin Clark, baby. I said probably a week ago that Caitlin Clark would lead lead the league, the WNBA in assists before the season is over. Guess what? She leads the league in assists right now with 15 games left to play. She now leads the league with 7.8 Assist per game. Alyssa Thomas is now second at 7.7. And we can expect that number to continue to increase for Caitlin Clark as she pops up double digit assist marks for the remainder of this season. Do not expect to see Alyssa Thomas pass her again. It maybe it happens for a day, maybe to, maybe tomorrow, Wednesday. But it's not going to happen. Caitlin Clark has figured this league out. Her team isn't bricklaying layups every second they can. They're not dropping passes every second they can. She's leading the league in assists. I told you she would. Remember when she made that comment? When they just oh, when they decided to leave Caitlin Clark off of the U.S. Olympic team. You remember what she said? Well, yeah, her coach told you because her coach is untrustworthy and her coach felt the need to share it with the world. Christy Sides, there was was that coach. She chose to share it with the world. Caitlin Clark had texted to her coach, they woke up a monster. Well, let's take a look. What happened since that day? Yes, that initial game was probably her worst game. That was the Atlanta game. She went for seven points, six assists, and four rebounds. They won that game. Since then, Caitlin Clark has gone 23-9-8, just short of a triple-double versus Chicago. She's gone 18 6 12, 18.6 assists, 12 rebounds with four steals, 16 points, seven assists, four rebounds versus Atlanta, 17 points, 13 assists, four rebounds, and four steals versus Chicago, 15 points, seven assists, six rebounds, and a, and a block versus Seattle. 15 points, 12 assists, 9 rebounds against Phoenix. Again, just missing a triple-double. You see that these close triple-doubles that are there that could have been triple-doubles if her teammates wanted to pad her stats. They didn't. 13 points, 11 assists, 6 rebounds, and 1 steal versus Vegas. 19, 13, 12, and 2 against Phoenix. The Liberty for the first triple-double by our WNBA rookie. 29 points, 13 assists, 5 rebounds, 5 steals, and 3 blocks against Washington. 20 points, 13 assists, 6 rebounds, 2 blocks, and a steal against Phoenix. And most recently, a 17-point game, 6 assists, 3 rebounds, and 2 steals, while having 10 points in the fourth quarter and 2 assists to help them come back from a 7-point fourth-quarter deficit on the road in Minnesota. 
Caitlin Clark told you they were waking up a monster. She's awake. She is awake. And since that game, Caitlin Clark has averaged. Let's add this up real quick. I'm sure someone will say, oh, why aren't you ready with this? Well, because I just sometimes do these off the cuff. So I have to look some stuff up while I do it. Six. Two, 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 nine, six, seven, 13, seven, 12, 11, 13, 13, 13, six. In five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 games. So he's averaging 9.66, so 9.7 assists since, blah, 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 since then. She's dominating. She's dominating this game. She's dominating this game while people were focused, so focused on a puffy, fraudulent, double-double achievement, semi-achievement by Angel Reese. Caitlin Clark has been flat-out dominating. You know what she's been doing also in that time period? She's winning. In that time period, they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They are eight and four. That's what it means to be the rookie of the year. That's what it means. When you're doing special things, your team's their team is winning. Your team is winning. Your team is making comeback wins over the Minnesota Lynx and the New York Liberty in, a, in a, an eight-day period. Two of the top four teams in the league. Yeah, they had a disappointing loss against Washington, but two comeback wins and a disappointing loss against Chicago. But two comeback, they beat Phoenix twice, and they beat Minnesota, and they beat the Liberty in that stretch. Caitlin Clark is leading the league in assists, baby. And she's going to move that number higher and higher. She'll be over eight, eight, and probably eight and a half before the season's over. And lead this league in assists while averaging 18 points a game. Along with six rebounds. And easily win this rookie of the year race, which shouldn't even be a race. I think Vegas has it now at minus a thousand or minus two thousand. So for all you ESPN people who think and keep wanting to spread the narrative and push this agenda that you have, Vegas knows more than y'all. It's very rare that Vegas is wrong. It's insane. When you watch point spreads in professional sports, how so often a football spread is a minus six and the game is decided or six and a half and the game is decided by six or seven points. They know what they're doing. It's very rare. That's why they're Vegas. Because they know something that we don't. But Caitlin Clark is leading the league in assists, baby. She's showing you who she is. She's showing you that she is that player. She is showing you who the star of this league is. I'm not saying she's the best player in the league. Because she's not. That, that right belongs to Asia Wilson. But it won't be too much longer before Caitlin Clark becomes the best player of this league. It won't be this year. It might not be next year. But three years, they'll be talking about Caitlin Clark as the best player in the WNBA. But what she is, is the best guard in the WNBA. The best guard, the best point guard, the best shooting guard. She is the best guard in the WNBA right now. Don't tell me about her field goal percentage at 39.8%, which is just under 40%. Don't tell me about the 33% from three because she's shooting it from 28 feet and almost never gets an open look. Tell me about how these other players are shooting, the ones that you think are the be are better guards. They shoot in the same area, they shoot in the same percentage area or worse, and none of them face the defense that Caitlin Clark faces every single night. What this young woman is, is special. I did not watch the WNBA before Caitlin Clark. Did it turn it on occasionally? What I mean by watch, I mean, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it, pay attention to the WNBA. 
until Caitlin Clark. <clears throat> I saw a game here and there, bored. It's summertime. There's nothing else going on but baseball. And when the Yankees aren't playing, I'm not really watching baseball all that much. There's a fight. I'm watching a fight. But there's no NBA. There's no NFL. There's no college football. There's no NHL. So, yeah, this is the sport now to watch. And I will wa and I would flip and if it was on, I might watch it, you know, for a few minutes. But it never caught me. It never grabbed me. I was a lot more interested in women's college basketball in terms of comparing women's basketball for the for NCAA and NBA. WNBA, I watched the NCAA because the NCAA still has that fun fun feel to it, the passion feel to it. But yeah, I I. I Caitlin Clark made me, is, has made me watch the WNBA. Caitlin Clark made me buy League Pass. I bought the League Pass. I bought the WNBA League Pass. I didn't even know one existed until this year, and I bought it because I wanted to be able to watch more games than just her and sit here and say that, oh, you'd only watch it for her. No, I watch it, for, I watch it because of her. But now I have to do comparisons from her to other players and be able to see how they're defended and how they're played. And that's why I keep saying simple little things like you don't get it. You just don't get it. And the, when it bugs me, when these pundits who have been on this Angel Reese hype train, they ignore simple facts and nuances of basketball. And it blows me away. It's absolutely crazy. So I sit here and I watch this stuff and I'm sitting here like, what are you seeing? Are you not seeing what I'm seeing? I like to watch good basketball. And I'm watching a bunch of bricklayers. I'm watching layups being missed. Layups, constant layups being missed. No one is perfect. But layups being missed the way they, that the percentage of which they are missed in this league is off the charts. Forty percent from a guard in the WNBA is a good shooting percentage. That's really the truth. Team shooting percentages are forty-three percent, forty-two percent, but good shooting percentages from a guard in the WNBA are forty percent, and that's how bad the league is. And that's from people that are typically wide open, and she's never wide. She's almost never wide open, and she shoots fifty percent from two which people will always forget. She shoots 50% from two. But yeah, Kaylin Clark leads, leads the league in assists, baby. And she's going to keep on growing that number. I'm sorry for my dog barking in the background. But yeah, I had to get this, this video done. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us. Come on now.